Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I'm Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benici, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail. And our passion is sharing that with you every week. Hey. The voice. How are you, gentlemen? How are you? I'm doing well. What's going on? Excellent. Ah, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Just yeah, stuff you, going on. Where are you at, Phil? Oh, I'm at home. I'm at home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I got the blur on. The, I'll show you the... Uh, it's not my studio. It's uh, it's the kids' studio. That's my daughter's. Yeah. Um, nice. All the drawn stuff. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I see yeah. Kenny's all decked up for, uh, you know, all the latest and greatest. What's going on? Just hanging out. I'm in uh, Penticton. Yeah, you look like you're struggling. Nice. Yeah, I'm locked out of our, uh, what do you call it, our Airbnb. Oh, no. So I, I, I decided to take it on the patio. <laughs> so that's ah. awesome. That's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, you the said wife. you're locked out? Or the like, wife I, locked you out? Yeah, the 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 wifey and the baby we, there's uh, there's three families that are here we rented a house nice. for about five six days okay. and uh yeah the girls have the baby so they're out at some winery and we just got back and uh we can't get in <laughs> are they oh i see that's hilarious well doesn't look like you uh you're gonna have like to fight struggling. the weather or anything like that so it's all good yeah no i'm, I'm golden Nice. Yeah, we're still oh, bringing it back in the cargo for Rod. Yeah. Figure it out. Figure it out. Oh man. So, gentlemen, how... what 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 podcast number is this? And you guys are so busy. I have to book three months in advance or two months in <laughs> advance to, to get a spot. Uh, well, you can see a specialist faster than the two of us, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's, it's, it's gone. True. It's gone crazy the last couple months. Yeah. What episode yeah. are we on? um like what we published or how many so we we just published episode 238 um but wow. we've got we've got uh we're behind i want to say that we've really got recorded up to about 245 wow. give or take yeah we're a little bit behind now take, that would, yeah. we've kind of bundled a whole bunch together how do you guys do it um well if you work part-time buddy you can do lots of things in life yeah <laughs> uh, yeah okay that's not really the answer I feel, but okay I feel, I, <laughs> we can I go with like, that <laughs> i feel like you guys are, are, are full-time and this is you know this is something that, that you do on top <laughs> yeah we've definitely leaned into the gig for sure and then this is this has been fun we have a fine time so, for this this is easy so we have one two three four yeah, really close. So two thirty eight. We're you're you're probably going to be two forty four ish. Yeah, two forty four ish. Well, hopefully, well, considering we didn't think it was going to last that long. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how long. I thought you know we maybe just for three, four, five months, six months. It's been four yeah. and a half years. Four and a half years. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's like an average of one a week. One a week, if not, we do. We, we, we have haven't. Week. The only week that we've ever missed is the week that Kenny took a week off because he had COVID. Yeah, I just couldn't do it. I was dying. He, that week. He, you know, he just couldn't suck it up and no, like it's terrible. Geez. I couldn't stay awake. I bet. I couldn't stay awake. That's tough, man. Yeah. No, it was yeah. I, like it was terrible. I hate. Oh my god, it was. Yeah, it was rough. But hey, it's all good. All good. I've heard horror stories, and I've heard that people go through it and they don't even know they had it. So I'm sure there's people like I'm sure there's people they were had people over last night, yeah. and four of the six of us had not had it not that they know of yeah right and that's the difference and you know my wife and my wife's had it twice i've had it you know i'm i've life, never right? had it but i'm i'm sure oh. i've had it do you know like i have been around enough people that have had it part of the family's had it you know i've i've just never oh. so i don't know i don't know what that means you know what i mean i don't know whatever mm -hmm. it's all good how long are you in penticton i'm here until monday oh nice okay okay yeah that's nice that's a nice little getaway yeah it's beautiful i was walking the baby this morning and like i walked three blocks i was in the water and there was that many people i was like this is awesome is it quiet 
it, it seems quiet, but you know, I I usually spend my days in you know in the house. Yeah, whatever. Taking right? turns on the baby and then working from home. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's that's all part of it. That's that's part mm-hmm. of a that's part of the new dad thing, right? I mean, it's their babies. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you still guys, you're enjoying it, it though. It's I love fun. it. Yeah, it's unreal. It's a gift. Uh, it's um. Yeah. Very fortunate and honored to, to have the opportunity to be a parent. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah. yeah. I know we've you know we've kind of caught up briefly over the last few months, and I, I know you two share the same uh, feeling. So yeah, it's, yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. It, it gets a lot cooler. It gets cooler. I tell we say it every time yeah. we talk about kids on the podcast. Every stage is better than the last one, right? Wow. And I'm lo- like loving the kids now. Me too. Except when the boy takes the car out, and then I'm like, I'm not sure. You yeah. Know? Ah, even now, what the hell? <laughs> if they could find a gas station or a car wash, yeah, it's yeah. golden. Not that they yeah, ever yeah. find that, but yeah, if they yeah. could, it'd be it'd yeah. even be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this across our lives, right? <laughs> uh, listen, know? the kid paid for gas the other day on the hybrid, and he was upset because he was like, "Oh my gosh, I feel that it cost me so much money," and I was like, "Uh huh." Uh-huh, and he goes. So dad, it was like 80 bucks. And I go, okay. Oh, you're expecting me to pay you back. But I don't think so. Right. He was like, what? I was like, look, you drove the car, man. Like, you know, like the least you can do is pay for once out of the 10 times you drive the car, right? Like exactly. Jesus. Yeah, and throwing yeah. a 20 for him filling it up, right? Yeah, right. So make, I know. Make it up, make yeah. it a hundred. Make it even honey. Right? We'll be happy, right? Jeez. Jeez. Like seriously matter of these kids holy geez man so that's kind of a hike for you right because you're on the island and so yeah, how I, long did how long from... did it take you to get out to penticton um we got on the 6 20 a.m ferry mm-hmm. um got to to Watson and like just after nine saw my parents we, it, it, we got here about 5 p.m yesterday okay okay so it was it was almost like, like a 12 day. hour day yeah 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 yeah, yeah that's quite the hike yeah. Oh, salt spring because you can't come to the mainland from salt spring you got to go to the island first then come yeah. to the mainland right well, you you can um there's I, I call it the milk run uh but you can go from salt spring and go to like three or four islands and your last stop is to Boston. that's oh, like three okay. hours that's yeah a, that, yeah that's uh, yeah, a yeah. hike but yeah. you stay in one ferry you don't have to you know oh which is like that's not too, i mean if you're a tourist I mean, it's really pretty, right? I mean, you can yeah. see the what's really cool. You go through the eyes, see the it's nice, yeah. but like for people who live here, mom, mom, yeah, three hours, like three hours, oh. like, I, I can get to Toronto practically. <laughs> here's a here's if you take Harbor Air or Sierra, like if you take a seaplane over, yeah, you're golden. Uh, uh, wifey and I, Jen, used to live on East Van, and sometimes if I had meetings downtown and I left at like seven thirty. I'd be in traffic for like half an hour, 45 minutes, then find parking. Yeah. Right. Which is very affordable in Vancouver. Uh, totally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's the housing. 14 bucks an hour or whatever it is. Yeah, right. Exactly. And then you're racing to your meeting for like an 8 30 and just getting tight. I can get on like an 8 50 plane, get to Cole Harbor at, I mean, or 7 50 plane, get to Cole Harbor at 8 15 and walk to a meeting there by 8 30. You know, it's crazy. Yeah it's it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty amazing it's the best commute i've ever experienced in my life <laughs> a seaplane so we got the rock star commute man yeah i don't do it often but when i do no, it's, it's like nice it's pretty special yeah when i was working yeah. in the old days i mean we periodically would go to like van island like victoria and it was wonderful mm-hmm. right because you just go from down coal harbor fly right downtown victoria yeah, like super fast. I mean, the only shitty parts. If yeah. the ceiling's under three thousand feet, they can't fly or something like that, right? Because they have to fly mm-hmm. by sight. They yeah. can't fly instrument, right? But oh, it's such a neat way to fly. Landing on the water is just so cool, and oh, I loved it. It's, oh, it's nice. nice. It's nice. Well, Kenny? episode two forty four. Do you guys want to kick it off? Or yeah, we, yeah, Kenny, do, do you want it? do you want to do an intro? Sure. So. Today we have on Jaren. How do you last? How do you pronounce your last name? Meche. 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 I thought Meche. I was assuming yeah. that, but I didn't know. You're one of the few Damien's drop right. the C or not, right? <laughs> right. So Jaren Meche, who's uh, your claim to fame, I'm assuming in terms of business, not a multitude of other things you're famous for. Having a child, super famous. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, co-founder of New Beverages, which is a I guess like a vodka. 
uh, spritzer Spock idea, soda. Right? Spock yeah, soda. We, we kind of started the category. And yeah. I think how you and I connected, which brought us to yeah. this mess. I think I reached out to you on LinkedIn. You commented something on LinkedIn, and I thought, I, nice, he was like a nice kid. So I said, I'll ah, bug him for a bit, see what it is. I slid into your DMs on LinkedIn, and I was think he has, yeah, I think he had a post about uh, Fairy Creek or coffee or just something that was impact driven. And I was like, this guy sounds like a cool guy. I love his posts. And I just, he sounds I think like I, he knew what he's hey, talking about. No, hey, I'm yeah. going to tell the kids, this is recorded. <laughs> I'm going to see yeah, the kids. Is, see, yeah. this guy thinks I'm a cool guy. I'm yeah. going to tell my kids that. Yeah. yeah Cause I nerd dad bullshit. See, I'm, I got yeah. called a cool guy by a young yeah. guy too. Yeah. But... <laughs> Better believe it. Now look what yeah. you've done. Yeah. Exactly. Draw it, you're in. Man. You know, anyway, I, it just resonated with the kind of the authenticity and impact piece. So I, I wasn't aware that you you did a podcast, to be honest, until we but, got chatting. So well, I because I looked at your thing and I thought, oh shit, that's kind of cool. Local. That's you yeah, know, yeah. I've I've had new mm. products. I thought I had yeah. them on. And then I found out inadvertently. I mean, I was I was in the car with Rattan one day and we're yeah. driving and he goes, Well, I want to introduce me to people. I said, Well, I met this guy and I met this guy, Jerry, and he goes, yeah. well, I could have introduced you. I said, well, I don't need you anymore. First off, uh, he found me. Now I can see he found me and thought I was cool. On top yeah, of cool. But oh. he found me. I don't need you. Uh, you know, they introduced me to the, the cool kids in town. I can get them too, eh? That's funny. That's funny. Jerry, he's never going to shake that. Friends. We're going to have no, to make him a t-shirt now or something. Jiren said yeah. I was cool. Uh, I think that, what the I'll wear that. Have to say, well, you better believe it. I'm yeah, all over that. So. Oh, man. I'm going to tell the kids when we hang up this thing. I got one in yeah. one in Vernon, one's in New Zealand. Everybody's getting a little <laughs> WhatsApp. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I'll, I'll screenshot it now. Yeah, so that's that's how we connected, and then uh, I ran into you guys at CHFA. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was you, a blast. You were kind enough to introduce us to a couple of people. One hasn't come on. Her episode hasn't come on yet, but uh, founders of Chiwis. So Sarah Goodman. Yeah. So bad with hers, names. Hers um, came on. I think I listened to yeah, that one. Yeah, she's on. Yeah. She's been on. It's and then the, the other one that has been Karen on McCaffey, is the Cheese Blue Heron. Yeah, yeah Blue, Blue Heron. Heron. Oh, what a fascinating. She's not been on yet. She was wonderful. Ah. What a great story. Oh my gosh. Oh my yeah. gosh. I mean, Sarah's was awesome too, so I'm not going to want to just yeah, yeah, both listen. Are, oh, yeah. Both of But I, yeah. the Cheese one to me was massively intriguing just because I like cheese, right? I like cheese cheese. Not, you know, dairy cheese. But the way she's described it, and I've had her cheese. It's the only vegan one I've had that I actually enjoyed. Typically, I'm thinking, okay, my you people, I, you call it whatever you want, but it ain't cheese. But her stuff actually, it's got the texture and sort of the consistency of a cheese. Jiren, uh, Jiren also sets a, a different standard. So for anyone who uh, comes on the podcast or is going to come on and they can't make it, <clears throat> Jiren not only um, canceled early, but he actually found us two guests. So that is the new standard for anyone who can't make it. You need to actually star, bring right? two guests, um, you know, because that's that's what Jiren does. Right. So Jiren yeah, yeah, was yeah. like, I'm so sorry I can't make it. We're like, you know, like we're 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 podcasters. Right. So we get that no one really cares about what we do. So so <laughs> like when people cancel, we kind of like mm -hmm. whatever. They don't have to. So that's they don't show. You know, but um, but you're in. It's like no, 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 no. I not only not one but two, and they're both amazing. So yeah, to the point where you you know if he never came on, it really didn't matter. We got two hey, rock stars hey, out of him hey, anyway. Right? Nice. <laughs> now so do you true. think he's I'm so in, cool? I don't think. I, so. I'm in stitches right now. You guys are hilarious. I, I loved it. I, <laughs> oh, I listened boy. to Kenny. I was like, uh, I was like, Kenny, uh, thanks for calling me out on the podcast. I booked one for two. I figure you know you, if you're gonna put pressure, you're gonna cancel on us. Fine, yeah, we'll put pressure yeah. on you. Let's stick them a little bit. See what happens. Oh, it's so good. That oh, was awesome. but, oh, but great, but great guess. Like I've, I've, out of anything, like seriously, set the bar. That was awesome. Because thank you. Because they were wonderful to talk to. They Both were of them. really wonderful. Like yeah, really, we really, really cool. enjoyed them. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, very, yeah. very, very impressive and very inspiring. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. seriously, like just got their shit together, hard work and. Away we go. Yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. All right, man. Well, Tell us about you. Yeah. What's going on with you? You know what's, the format because you've you listened. From... For just give yeah, us the Cooper you. Scooper. What's going on? Um, should I take it back or what's going on today? You, uh, yeah, you can kick it back as far back sure, as you, you know, want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I, I've been in food, beverage, and hospitality for 21 years. I, I immigrated to Canada in, in the late 90s, and you, you typically work uh, multiple jobs as an immigrant, clean buildings, cafeterias, you know, yep. uh, coffee shops. Uh, my first legal job was McDonald's. Uh, and that was in 01. <laughs> yeah. I love legal. Yeah. For those who don't understand, that means paid by check. <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> um, so, but, you know, in, in, in the kind of early mid 2000s, I, I got, um, I got an opportunity to work for a company called CIM consumer impact marketing, and I did brand activations and festivals, events, and large scale kind of, um, events and I, I just fell in love with how consumers made that emotional connection with the brand right how you connected with them how you introduced a product deliver the product the uh, knowledge kind of benefits and features and um you know did the pepsi taste challenge kind of like fido xbox soba rush and, and the following year i was tasked to hire you know 60 brand managers to do that across bc so Wow. Um, that, that kind of group started an event planning marketing company at UBC as a start of Facebook where you had to have an interchange account or like a university account. And, um, you know, I'd put an event or a party and I would get double decker buses or limos at UBC and then it, it'd get packed because there was that many events on Facebook. So that kind of progressed over time to do corporate events and charity events and ended up doing some activations for hypnotic gray goose um some wines some beer um sleem and some mike's beverages and um you know did some tastings typically in in retail tastings and alcohol beverage at the time it was individuals that didn't really and this is some but didn't really know or or understood the brand and it was just mm -hmm. like they were hired by an agency they got an email or you know they went to so they didn't have all the deliveries and were passionate right. about it so it's, there's a bit of disconnect right um they're typically a bit uh you know it just wasn't a good brand fit it was somebody that's never tried the product right yeah. yeah yeah so anyway um did a number of those did them slightly differently um, at one point, one uh, I had to wear, uh, you know, topic here. I had to wear uh, a. It was bear flag wines, and I had to wear a, a bear mascot costume. <laughs> and it, it was, it was, yeah, it was unique. Uh, but any, so that grew. Uh, I was fortunate. Uh, I went to at the time. I was, um, I was studying. I was at UBC. And then uh, I was studying, I went to Douglas College to do my uh, physical education degree for, for teaching with, with a minor in marketing. And then went back to UBC uh, to do my bachelor's of education. And I realized I was like 30K in debt. Uh, I needed to get a job. So I went back to events and marketing, worked for Thunderbridge for a few years, then managed a few nightclubs and restaurants. Uh, and then I was like, I'm, I'm tired of the late nights. I want to go into the, the other side. So I worked for... Mm a fine wine uh, and beer and spirits um, distributor called Peter Melizinski Agencies and really enjoyed my time there. I met a few of my mentors, um, Peter Jr. himself, but most importantly, the guy named my, Dave McIntosh that kind of showed me the ropes on the back end, how to import products and work with the liquor boards and, and a lot of great people at PMA. Um, so that was great. It was the top rep for a brand called Jägermeister across the country. And then 2016, I, I met uh, my previous business partner, Julius. Um, and we, we started new, kind of raised a few hundred thousand dollars, um, did hundreds of designs, did hundreds of pitches, and then launched a year later in July 2017. So it'll be almost five years now that it's been in the market. And uh, yeah, it was a very humbling experience. Got to go to thousands of stores and, and build something very special. So it was an honor to be a part of it. And and sorry, so so nude is the um so the nude, sugar fee, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, nude beverages was the first ready to drink beverage is the RTD category. Okay. That was sugar free, sweetener free, carb free, locally produced in the five percent kind of abv okay um typically they're full of sugar 
right. um, you know, 30, yeah. 40 grams, a six pack would be your yeah. daily nutritional, uh, yeah, your calorie maximum. count for the yeah, calorie, calorie count, count for the day. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, um, so it was just clean and crisp. Um, it didn't give you that sugar induced, uh, hangover. And it was kind of, you know, to me, it was more than an alcohol beverage brand. It was a lifestyle brand that ideally empowered others. If uh, two guys in their twenties could could do something, hopefully it empowers you to to put better for you products out there and chase your dreams and and, and do something special. So and that's give that ballsy, right? Because that that was yeah. white space, really. Yeah. There was nothing. Yeah. Like I remember when Nude came out because you guys came out. I don't know how hard, but like by the time I saw it, let's say it's definitely pre-COVID. But you know, we went in the liquor store one week. There's nothing. You go to the section, there's mics and all that other shit, which is highly sugared to me. I, I never liked it because it's yeah. too sweet. And then before you know it, there's stacks of these white cans and boxes and like all over the place. And you're thinking, okay, what the hell is this? Yeah. Right. And then you read the can and think, oh, this actually might just taste like what it's supposed to. Like, I don't need the but, sugars and stuff. But you also you didn't have anybody there. Like You, you also it. did something that you didn't have to, right? Because that category... I think everybody else in that category, this is just my own opinion, but everybody else in that category recognized that if I could throw the right combination of sugar and flavor together, it's gonna I'm going to make money at it, right? It's going to sell. So do you know what I mean? Like, so having something that is sugar free in that category was um, like an incredibly responsible thing to do when, you know, <laughs> nobody in that category was being responsible, so, right? No, no, do, yeah, exactly. Like, why it, right? do? Like, how, why yeah. do you think it was actually going to? Yeah, work? it's a harder road. Is right? is like I guess what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it happens to be that like the godfather of the space, Anthony von Mandel, is from BC mm -hmm. and kind of started the canned beverages space, something more sensible that wasn't beer that you know didn't get you bloated, but it was high sugar for you know in the early 2000s. Um, yeah, this innovation, it's its kind of, people have been drinking vodka sodas for decades. You know what I mean? It's nothing new. You go to the bars, right. vodka yeah. sodas in the early 2000s. Yeah. It's just that it came in the came can format in, in the mid 2015s kind of thing, right. and maybe mm -hmm. earlier in 2013 and other places. So it's been there. It's just that the market was ready for it, right? Hitting all the trends, people were watching what they're putting into their, their bodies, the ingredients, where it's produced, you know, the calorie content, if it hits the, the keto market, right? So it was just the right timing for it. And we're fortunate enough to be ahead of that. And we also execute it, right? It's it's great to have a good product that tastes wonderful, but mm -hmm. um, does the rubber hit the road in execution? And, you know, I was fortunate enough to travel across the country in the U.S. and Europe and Australia and been to thousands of stores and hundreds of tastings. And, you know, it did it... Um, it's kind of the old school grass, grassroots way, right? Cans and hands, liquid to lips, nothing special. It's not like we, you know, we, it's something secretive that we did. It's just, but you, but you did pound it. the pavement, but you yeah. did it and you got like the space. Like that was the part that impressed me more than sort of the other part. I mean, retail space, whether it's a liquor store or a normal store, retail space is retail space. Like you don't just get floor space because you come in and smile and tell a nice story, right? I mean, nobody gives a shit, right? It's, what's this going to do for me? But I do remember like literally one week there was nothing. And then there was white cans, white boxes, like stacked. And you're thinking, mm -hmm. all right, like what the hell? And well, then everybody's talking about it. like, seriously, all our friend groups, I'm old, a lot older than you is, you know, people are trying to watch their sugars and nobody liked the, the sort of the hangover you got. Like if you had five or six of, let's say, not going to pick on mics, but like mics or those things, like the, you got a lot of nah, sugar. You knew, in that. it's not you just knew the, the next day you paid for it. Like the next you paid day. for it, right? Because it's, 100%. You're just yeah. overloaded with sugar yeah. pop. Where your stuff, like all our friends are thinking, oh my God, this is actually good. We can drink quite a few of them. You don't yeah. get that sugar rush, sugar hangover. Totally. And it also premiumized the category. And now it's even the prices are increasing more, but it got people to buy up. Usually Absolutely. it was more of an e economy, kind of a six pack for eight nine ten dollars right you know, now six mm -hmm. bucks 15 bucks right and when you think of it when it was like in 2015 retail sales for hard seltzer which is um you know sugar brew or uh, fermented malt like malt right um, in the u.s because it was that was about two hundred forty-five thousand dollars in retail sales last year is over six billion 
So it's triple digit growth year after year, massive. And it's become, it's taking a, a large chunk from a number of categories, but for beer as well too. So the last time stakeholders experienced this kind of growth was probably in the 80s for light beer. So, you know, you mm. got something that's clean and crisp. It hits, you know, it, it hits what consumers are, are wanting. Right. Checks it's refreshing. Yeah, it's, it's sessionable. And it gives you great margins, great turns, right? So I've, I've been kicked out of stores when I first started it. You know, uh, I've been sworn at, yelled at. Um, and it took a while. It took like a good six to nine months of heavy trial and grinding it daily. Because right. um, people just, their palates weren't used to that, right. you know, uh, unless you got it right away. Right, right. Uh, unless you, you 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 drank a lot of soda water, or you drank vodka sodas, or if you drank or vodka you sodas, your diet, which I did. Like I yeah, like vodka sodas, right? Like then you 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 got it right away. Thought, oh, okay, this is yeah, I get this. I, this is nice, nice on the palate, clean, yeah, and a little flavor. Well, that's kind of different. That's kind of cool. Totally. And once it hit, and once you had a few, but the first few sips were different for people just because oh, they all used to drinking cider or coolers or right or what what have you but um yeah it mm -hmm. was uh, it was awesome now you're you're still part of that and you're still doing that but it's not your main focus anymore right you're doing yeah you other know what things. Uh, i didn't uh had a fallen out with my business partner which happens quite often not values aligned and uh, we'll get to in detail but just parted ways and That's still fine, the second man. largest you know shareholder and I uh, was fortunate enough to hire and train a lot of people at me. So it's their time to um, take it over and, and, and mm -hmm. do what they can. And um, in the process where I, I, I sit on the board of, of Blue Hair and Lumi Foods, and right. it was just like when I met Karen, tried the product, met the team, it was just like their mission was, well, to go after cheese, but just to make product that's better for you better for the people better for the planet uh better for the animals more sustainable you know direct sourcing and then went to the b corp uh certification uh with a third party um a decade um kristen and the team there were phenomenal and brianna but anyway it was just like a light bulb went on it's like something like i see business as a force for good right mm -hmm. i see that it can have such positive impact so anyway it was like i'd love if i had everything i needed and i don't need much because i live on salt spring on farmland right uh you know i'm, I'm very fortunate i have a love of family and a roof over my head and food on the table so like i was like what would i do and it was just to give back and have impact and, and support other local founders or uh, ideally you know female entrepreneurs and, and help them de-risk grow scale and and get access to capital so um you know out of necessity uh, my business partner now andrew um we we started an impact fund where you know we help um valleys align founders and we work with a number of them and help them grow and scale very cool wow yeah very cool that's really very cool. good very good mm -hmm. so that's kind of what we're up to now and what so I'm up to now. <laughs> can you share like some of the ones? Yeah. I had that so as a show. 85 milligrams of caffeine. Um, a couple of buddies in the East Coast. A phenomenal team. Just great people. But another innovation and, and something that's clean and crisp. And, and gets you that afternoon tons of sugar. Yeah, it gets you that afternoon pick me up. You don't have bad breath. So I, I think it should be a health product. <laughs> way. You know what? I, you know I, what I, I like, listen. I, I don't think. Well, caffeine is. You know, caffeine gets a bad rap from the Italian guy who drinks you know crap tons of espresso every day. Bad rap. Bad rap. Undeserved. I love Basically, coffee, and I love the tradition you. of coffee. But Absolutely. in the afternoon, I love the convenience of cracking and, and exactly. Just, you know, but it's a nice, refreshing yeah. way to totally. To, to have a nice drink i really enjoyed it too because i did like it because it wasn't it's not sweet um because i see i can't do the red bulls and i can't do all that shit i'm not yeah. again it's it i can't drink i can't drink cough syrup 
And to me, yeah. that's what all that stuff tastes like to me. It's just so sugared. I, I just don't, I don't yeah. get it. Highly processed with things you can't pronounce mm -hmm. probably. Right. Well, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I'm, I've never so, understood that. Yeah, another one I'm very passionate about is, is I don't know if you've connected with the Wise Guys, Wise Ice Tea, uh, 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 kind of an upcycled uh, coffee leaf tea, uh, Arno and Max, um, they've been added. They started with Loose Leaf for about eight years and got into RTDs now. So cool. it's um, started year cool. two. Okay. Yeah, typically um, a, a great family farmer from Nicaragua too that provides the leaves. Uh, but Typically, the coffee beans are, are used and right. harvested and leaves are discarded. So mm -hmm. uh, they found a way to, you know, roast them and extract uh, these great flavors out of it with antioxidants, 35 milligrams of caffeine, a tiny bit of sugar. Um, and it's a great refreshing beverage in another industry that's got 30, 40 grams of sugar in a bottle, right? Well, exactly, which is yeah, you yeah. Know, why I don't participate in those drinks either, mm -hmm. right? Because it's trying you to get away from the sugar. Kenny, you're 100%. kind of grouchy. I feel like you don't drink anything. I drink yes. everything as long as it's clean. I don't like sugar in all my shit. I can't drink sugary drinks. I mean, I, I, pop is the only thing I can do because pop is supposed yeah. to be sugary. Yeah. yeah. But I can't do like all that. I can't do the sweet. It drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm um, not grumpy you, either. I had a gum. I had a yeah. very good day, by the way, young man. <laughs> yeah. I'm grumpy. I got called need, cool. Did you get called? Maybe you're grumpy. Maybe oh, you need to be called cool. easy now, uh, easy now. Uh, maybe there's a problem there. Uh, 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 a now look what you've done. Right? Look at look at these. We gotta oh, get you. We gotta God. get you a nude vodka soda. We gotta get you a chicken <laughs> one right now on the show. Right? <laughs> you can even sprinkle some inner scene there. Have it, you know. Yeah, there you uh, go. Just a fresh egg. There you go. Get your you electrolytes, go. right? Exactly. Oh a little vitamin C. Holy moly. Yeah. We're totally in the health side now. We're gonna oh, end up yeah. being MPN. Oh man, no, that's true. Um, the other ones, and and I don't know if you got a chance to connect with the founders from Humble yet. Alicia and Jeff Lehay. No. We're writing these uh, down. I'm just gonna see KB names from oh. you. So. Humble potato chip. Canada is like first organic potato chip in a compostable bag. You introduced me. That's bag. why I met you at the show. Oh like, yes, we were, yes, we were yes. right there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, unreal. Like it, I work with a lot of founders, and these two are just mind blowing. Um, uh, great executioners, decades of experience in the space. But it's like I've never been a part of a brand that's launched and has been in over a thousand points of distribution. Wow, it's pretty cool. Eh? Like seriously, that's blows cool. me away. Like that's yeah. And that's not an easy phenomenal. category. I know people think it is. It's not an easy category. Oh, no, for sure. Because you got two players, especially in this country, that, that really dominate the real estate within those types of, of, of snacks. Yeah, yeah. Like dominate. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Humble was good. I remember these guys. Yeah, I remember that was the first. Show. That's where, I remember yeah. that's where we met you. Gave yeah, you yeah. years for not coming on the show. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, I remember that. No, that's true. I remember that now. That was kind of at the setup the day prior to the I show. think it was the day before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. And the other one is source of vitamin infused chocolate, plant based vegan chocolate. Um, the founder, Jenny and Andrew Remlinger from San Francisco, they're phenomenal operators as well, too. And they kind of just, um, uh, started a new way of indulgence for vitamins typically you take you know pills or i take glucosamine and then and a bunch of other ones in turmeric and mm -hmm. vitamin b vitamin d but it's like the glucosamines are just like big pills and they're hard to swallow so it's like you know jenny needed something to because she was plant-based so she was lacking vitamin b and a few other things so uh the bioavailability of the vitamins through chocolate as a transport mm. mechanism is like three times higher than typical um, pills. So you get more of it and it's just like uh, uh, something that you indulge and look forward to taking. So is it the they, one in, uh, in the, uh, the, um, the small bags? They're in a post. They're not in Canada. They're small bags. It's 30 servings per bag. I think I had them uh, today. I was with Rattan this morning. Oh yes. I gave them to Rattan. Yes. I gave them some samples. I had the, they're like, I had the uh, it was the purple bag. That's the one I had. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I'm looking. I think at you might have had the collagen one. That's, that's the one like I had. That's yeah, the yeah, one. yeah. So I'm looking wow, at it because Rattan has tried these, and I'm, I'd look. I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, first off, not for anything. We'll, we'll, we'll pick on yeah. this one for so it's over here. I, I yeah. it took me like a while to read it. I'm thinking, okay, what is it? Yeah. Because I looked at it and it said vitamin. I'm looking. I'm, there's no MPN. I, I'm not finding yeah. the vitamin content. It's a U.S. product, right? I know. Never, it took me yeah. because I'm looking. I'm thinking, what the hell is this? Then I said, well, it's U.S. And then I started going through, I think, 
holy shit, man, this stuff's loaded. It's collagen, it's this, it's that. It's, Phil, they're phenomenal. Yeah. They're right. phenomenal. They're a high quality. So Rajinder's and, and... having one. His, bro- his uncle was having one. His cousin was having one. Like, we're all yeah. just munching on these things. That's interesting. I didn't know. I, I, it was I really think bad. just the delivery mechanism of chocolate is interesting. I love chocolate as a delivery. But, anything, but is that going to be... Because traditionally, like I, I know it's a U.S. thing only, but like in health, in health Canada, any any time, yeah, but gummies for kids took a long time, right? Because you but know I didn't like them when I was a vitamin buyer. I know, I, but I but gummies for kids, kids, you know, that's like health Canada would say, oh, you're you're right. kind of incenting them to take things. So I wonder with chocolate. Are you kind of going down? Will they go this down the same focused. road or not? Right? Like, I yeah, it depends what's in it. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't tell. From the panel because it's not like a canadian panel where you can easily see you know how much we were getting i mean i read it quickly yeah. it look more like a food panel and that's why i was kind of confused i think i told her time what are you gonna do with these these are not you can't do this in canada like it's you're 50 million miles from regulation as mm-hmm. who knows who knows we will we, we we may one day right <laughs> you should you can't do it not the way it was you have to go through yeah. the claims and all that and that's what mm-hmm. i was telling totally. him right so you can't yeah. you can't cheat on these and try them like he can't change the label enough to make it compliant in our For sure but really cool concept really tasty too yeah no um and they're doing extremely well and our, our co-founder there is sarah highland and she's phenomenal for modern family and and she's she's been a tremendous partner um and that's another way of like the cost of acquisition and, and and getting customers and advertising with facebook and instagram is hard is like but with you with our, our like founders that. seriously it it's been it's been great you know we're getting some wonderful traction and just um great media through that wow. kind of more organic like she mm-hmm. was on the ellen show a few months mm-hmm. ago uh, we probably experienced the biggest spike we've had in in the history of the product so yeah but, uh, well look she's she's a pretty big personality right For like sure. part of the a larger cast but definitely a personality and pretty articulate individual right so it's got to be you know right demographic the whole bit right so you know really good really good value add for the for the brand for sure um that's really cool really cool so that's kind of where where we're at it's keeping us busy and um supporting the founders to to grow these brands and so you're on a perpetual hunt or you be massively selective Mm -hmm. um yeah we're not this is all kind of um referrals and organic and it's just like being on the founder side you have to wear so many hats and it's a lonely journey and at the end you just want Mm. some support but uh if somebody's doing a capital raise and they got a phenomenal product they need you know the cash flow to hold the inventory to expand to a larger retailer or to filipio and and it just takes away from you're like oh i need to raise a million dollars but like who's going to run my business right you know, so it gets quite challenging. So, uh, you know, we've come in and, and we've put together a, a syndicated kind of platform where it's a special purpose vehicle. And we go to tried and true entrepreneurs or experts in the space, people who have had exits, and we pull in the money. And, then, you know, we'll raise half a million or 700K and they can still focus on the business and we'll support them. So we're very founder friendly. We sit on the same side as the table as them. And we just, we, we get it. And we want to do what we can to support and they mm. focus on what they're the best at and then we'll bring in people along the way um to, to you know if it's fractional ceos as, as um or advisors or senior leadership which makes sense or, though right because yeah. again mm-hmm. as you know the founders can typically get things to a certain point when you start hitting capital raises and stuff like that it's a distraction and what you don't need them to do is start losing focus you know what i mean it's, it's hard enough to focus on the day to day and typically you're running lean and all that stuff, right? You're, you're, it's just another distraction on top of enough stuff totally. to do. Right. So if they have people like you that can at least help out and take some of that pressure away. What, you know, um, makes what kinds of things do you look for? So as you, like when you look at these brands, right? Like clearly you have, you have an eye for detail and you've got an eye for, um, quality right like brands because the brands that you've picked nobody has a crystal ball maybe you do Mm -hmm. um you clearly have a a, well you have more of a crystal ball than most i think but how do you because i think that's useful for brands too is like how how does um 
how does a group like yours go about picking brands to bet on? Um, you know, what are the kind of things that they, you know, that, that you would look for that a brand well, the things you wouldn't can look think for about? Either, yeah, right? yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter which side. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. It, it, we can go on on this, but it, the, there's uh, there's some that are internal, right? For us, which is like value alignment, leaving a legacy, you know, impact, you know, sustainability. Um, I, we do like disruptive products, ones right. that bring a lot of value to the consumers. Um, if you're looking at doing the due diligence, it's like, you know, the first thing is like, can you work with these people? Do you like, you know, mm -hmm. eh, can you, can you go to war with them or sit in the trenches with them and things get, you know, challenging right yeah. uh, how do they handle stress but it's like do you think they'll be founder syndrome and then have you know um kind of eye in the sky as in like i want to be a billionaire or it's like i saw this exit so i'm doing this i you know it's just like <laughs> it's like that, that that's a red flag yeah. right you know um and it's like are, do they do they listen or are they open to feedback do they take that back they don't need to take you know um our advice or others but it's like are they opening you know are they open to that kind of feedback and then the unit economics have to make sense um you know it takes a different scale and strategy to go to 5 million 25 and 50 and 100 are are they mature enough or humbled enough to get out of their own way at certain because sometimes a certain leader or founder may not be the best person to take it to the next level yeah. they did great at, at this so um you know operations work ethic um sound judgment in those executions for sure this we look at and and you can go to gross margins and ebitda and, and you know what that is mm -hmm. after trade spend and mm -hmm. and all that but right. in the first few years if you go into emerging brands um and, and categories it's um you know they might be losing money the first 18 months or 24 months because they're building a brand Right. So how big is, is, is the category, the projected growth, um, you know, has there been innovation in the space in a decade or two or not? Is it the right time? Um, what's their go to market strategy? Um, how do they connect with the consumers? Do they have a tribal following? Does the product have a pent up demand? Do they have great feedback and connection with the consumers online or digital or TikTok or, you know, um, right. so it, it, Hmm. we look for a lot of things and we we typically do about a dozen calls with a founder before we take something on and i think what makes us different is that we write our own checks to everything we do you know and we roll up our sleeve and like i'll be on on my knees at the bottom row and you know merchandising it or i'll turn the chips bags upside down right and then make them crisp and flip them back up so the flavors is on top and it looks better right and it's like yeah. i'll do i'll do the sales calls i'll sit in with the distributors and brokers and i'll connect wherever you know we can so we we try and be hands-on because we we love the brands that we work with and we want them to succeed and we strongly believe they deserve to succeed and it's so tough being a a local startup in this category and you guys have highlighted you know all the work that goes into it and the cost but you're going against multinational conglomerates and strategics that could, you know, squash you pretty quickly. Uh, their, 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 their petty cash box is yeah. top line revenue. It totally. Yeah. Right? It's mean, like seriously. their marketing budget mm -hmm. is, is five times your global operating budget. <laughs> but it's true, right? Yeah. And you know, what's just shocking. And, 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 and I don't know if we discussed this, but I learned from a mentor of mine that um, we're, I guess we'll focus on grocery in Canada, but, the net EBITDA of all the grocery combined outlets in Canada is, is almost equivalent to the supplier trade spend. So it becomes less of, of you know, the pull through it. And it's like, oh, oh listing fees and delisting fees. Oh, and just and, everything. Just pick a right? fee. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, Monday fee, Tuesday's fee. <laughs> Bill back, charge I'm bored back, with you fee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My boss is yelling <laughs> yeah. at you fee. Yeah, you're a pain to the ass to deal with fee, oh right? Oh my god. Well, I used to have an aggravation <laughs> fee when I was a buyer. <laughs> well, if you agitated the shit on me, I, I, you're, you're gonna pay for it somewhere. But you're, you're just he threatened me, me with it. I never got hit fee. with it, but he did yeah. threaten me with it for That's sure. Funny. 
You know what uh, yeah. I want you to expand on before we go too mm -hmm. far away because we're here is because I think it's important because we do get a lot of small brands that listen to the show. We have brands that come in. Do me a favor, just like go back to the 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 founder syndrome. Yeah. And just do me a favor, like a little more in depth and highlight a little bit more because I think this is one part where a lot of people lose sight of what a cool idea is and not understand that a cool idea is not necessarily a business make. Do you know what I mean? Like and they get lost in themselves or they, or they get in the way of things. If you don't mind, it's some insights on that. Mm -hmm. No. Have you experienced anything recently or do you have, uh, could we go more specific? Uh, you know, so? I don't know if there's anything specific per se, Jared. I, I find that it, it's sort of what you were, what you were saying, but I, I was hoping you would actually have some, some insights on is I, I, we know a lot of people like nobody's specific per se, like people in general that, they have a tendency to, to get so wrapped up into their world and their space and what they believe that they stop sort of hearing, like they hear you, but they don't listen and they don't, yeah. they don't potentially appreciate some of the things you might be trying to tell them how to, how to not get uh, boxed in a spot that they're not going to get out of. Like they just totally. lose sight of, I think the game is, or I don't know if that's a good way to say There's, it. Still so so it like, a, uh, I don't know if this qualifies as founder, but you know, like what, what we've encountered is you'll, you'll kind of get a founder who is committed to the dream of something. And then what they, what they do is they, they go and they hire a team because they've read that hiring the best team is the right thing to do. They hire a team. But then what they start doing is, um, you know, they start launching products because they think that they've made the dream, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so you're kind of like, you you get guys like us that will go, whoa, whoa, listen, you just like, we've got six products that, you know, are core to your business. We got, we got to drive the crap out of these and get you some size and scale. And the founder has left the building because they are, you know, kind of eight product, eight, nine, and 10 are you know, in their head and out. Uh, totally. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it, it, I, I like focusing on doing what's most important for the business and you can execute on now. Right. I think mm -hmm. some founders are, are focused on the outcome and end goal when it's the process and the journey that's way more fruitful. Right. Mm -hmm. And it comes for me, at least in CPG, it's, it's the value that your product can bring to people's lives, right? So it's like when you're going to like eight SKU, nine SKU, 10 SKU, but you haven't proved SKU one and two and each SKU is costing you 50, 100K to launch. Right. You've hired the best team, but you're in debt a couple million. Right. And, it, you know, it's just like, it, it doesn't make sound or logical sense. Or you're hiring the best team for a skill set they have, and then you still want to tell them yeah. how to do their job. And, and yeah, to me, it's just like, and one of the rules I had is like, my goal was to empower and set the people in my team up for success in and outside of their careers or their workplace right. and give them the tools to do so. Right. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Makes sense. So, but it's yeah, it's a you, common problem. That's why I, I, yeah, they didn't want yeah. to gloss over it because I don't think people, no, no, it's massive. And, and I it's, think it's, it's founders don't see it themselves, and they have to be willing to listen sometimes to people like you who are coming in and saying, "Listen, you potentially on this one are in the way." It's or, it's a yeah, you know? it's it's a pet peeve of mine. It's like get in the market, talk to the consumers. The market will vote. The consumer will vote with their wallets. Go and have the interactions. Go talk to the buyer. Live in the store. Go there early, right? You yeah. sit at your desk and you try and you just think because the days are over when you put a product in the shelf and you think it's going to move. Yeah. And you've yeah. got a successful brand. And, I, I, and the thing is, it's like, it's so difficult. Like, what is it? 87% of businesses go under within their five, in the first five years. Yeah. If, There's if, probably if, something... Yeah. Maybe something even a little nineties. Let's see. You say and, probably a little higher. Maybe even. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's a tough gig. Yeah. yeah. You know. It's it's also, you know, way way more expensive than it used to be. Like I I I know that, you know. So launching product was always kind of expensive, but you think of where we are now, where, 
you know, shipping, you, you ship the wrong product, you, you're kind of screwed, right? Like the shipping costs are crazy. Everything's crazy right now to, to not be focused on what you're doing is actually quite dangerous, right? Like it, like there was a point that if you could survive the Loblaws listing fee or whatever and get on shelf, it would sell, right? And you'd be fine, right? Like no matter how you crashed at it, you, you'd be fine eventually. But now that's not the case, right? Like there are Mm -hmm. why go that wide when you haven't gotten deep and won over your own market yeah like start small yeah if it's a farmer's market you win at one then go win at three then go right. win at 10 then yeah. 40 then a regional approach like you've got like success leaves cues right you've seen a handful of brands that done phenomenally well on the west coast and have exited but it's like they built that pent up demand that velocity you know right. that that cult like following or they solved a problem but they grew it and it's like if if you do want an exit and you can work towards that but these and I'll, I'll give you a booze example but you know the multinational strategic sometimes are not the best at innovation they like getting They're brands horrific. that are doing you know <laughs> yeah no, but honestly like, you don't get you don't get innovation for big brands you get innovation for little ones big brands just buy them yeah and if you you know if you go, you're doing 25 50 top line they'll take you and they'll plug you into 75 percent ecv and grow you to a couple hundred million top line within the next 18 months or so right. right so it's like they're looking for that that those high turns you know that pull through they're looking for it to be a success in the geography great did you multiply it to multiple geographies yes you know i did great in in, in vancouver toronto california and new york fantastic and it's got opportunity right but it's like you go and you launch across the country with law bus or others but the pull through isn't there you've just wasted you know two hundred fifty thousand listing fees the inventory that hasn't pulled through and now you have to stimulate that growth over and over again to try and even save the listing or or recoup what mm. you can but you know you, if you're very strategic and they see that it's proven in the geography then they'll be open to potentially you know investing or acquiring because they can plug it into their cost cutting systems then the supply chain and production and if they you know they like expanding getting the expansion geographies or the cost cutting and if they can't do it they buy out a brand and right. if that doesn't happen, it's like the category blurring where it's like, you know, the Topo Chico hard seltzers or non-knock beverage companies getting in booze or, you know. And I feel like more and more now consumers have the power. You know what I mean? Like never before. Yeah. It used to be like a supply train you know, driven kind of model. It's like, oh, I can fill 80% of the country. I have the stock, I can get it there. Right. And then Whole Foods flips that on its head and it's a demand driven and you like, you know, high quality products or local or organic or, you know, gluten free. I think innovation will, and focus on niche and prove it out and grow, but innovation will lead the way forward. Like even for me, like I want, you know, there's a beverage I, at uh, Expo West, but it had like, you know, like great adaptogens in that turmeric. It tasted great. It had a low sugar profile. It might even had beetroot. It's like, you're looking for like so many different things in one item. Yeah. You know, that can have that effect or, or, or winding down or whatever it may be. You know, it's, it's not the most traditional thing. It's like, I'll just pick up a lager and, 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 mm -hmm. and drink 12 of them and then call it a night right yeah i want something high quality or local or you know cocktail or something something just a little little on the different little different yeah, yeah. i love it no. i love anyway, it anyway i i feel like i'm just going off topic here but uh there's no not at all i want to on I want to I, honor what my gut says and just share that. And I hope it resonates with a few people. But I think that's, that's, that's why we yeah. wanted you on yeah. as well. And that's why like, I've been pushed you on that because I, I think people just need to, people need to listen to people who are out to give you information for nothing more than to give you information. They're trying to help. Like you're not, you're we're, we're, like we do it, Phil and I do. You talk from the gut, you talk about, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care if you listen to me, you don't have to listen. But I'm telling you because I'm trying to 
share some insights that I may know. And I'm trying to give you a little bit of a head start. So maybe you don't crash into the wall that's just around mm -hmm. the corner that you don't see yet. Yeah, I was I was talking to um I think it's called Valor Equity Partners. It's the Starbucks venture arm. I think they're based out of Chicago. Um and 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 sent them a couple CPG deals on on their um on their different arm. But um the lady that's ahead of it, she called me back within a few days and said, Hey, we really like this product. I appreciate it. I just want to give you a heads up that it's not a good fit. And I know that I like to let the founders know from the get go and not waste their time. So it's just like, I truly respect that how they handled that mm, instead of just nice. they didn't have to do taking, that, huh? taking you through the, you know, a, right. a couple months worth of due diligence or whatever that may be. And I think when you're dealing with early stage startups or people who are very passionate and have that vision or that dream and they're, it's, the viability isn't there or the MVP isn't there or the product doesn't resonate right. or the business plan needs a little bit of work. I think the best thing you can tell them is that it, it's a lousy business plan. You need to work it again. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of wasting their time or even let's just say they raise money on that business plan, then they got a $5 million headache a year it's down still the road. a lousy business plan. Not it's still, <laughs> yeah. Right. If it wasn't a good business plan with no dollars, it's no better with $5 million. Yeah. This is now one with a nice big uh, price tag against it, right? Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, there's been some in Western Canada, and I know Vancouver sometimes gets a bad rep for, you know, these promo deals or these um, raising capital for certain deals. I know food was hot, but it's like if you're spending nine million dollars in advertising to get twelve million in sales, and your operating budget is fifty-five million, you're, you know. You, you've lost 54 million or whatever it is, 50 something million right. this year. It's where's your path to profitability? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, but that's we all wonder because you look at it. Like, what, what, are you, what are you doing this for? Like, are you, like, yeah. There's viability here, not in this case. Like, are you you, you gotta can't be doing just to do something. You can't go to the market or retail investors, institutional investors, and, and just keep asking for more money if you haven't proven it out. Is it is that driven a lot of times by you know I want to be the next Vega and I want to sell for four hundred million or the next yeah. Manitoba Harvest and sell for yes, six hundred yeah. million or whatever? I mean I think that's that, that's a fundamental problem with a lot of founders too is you lose sight of what you want to do this for if you're doing this strictly to come in because you got an idea and you think you're going to sell for fifty time multiple, you know you, you you've, you've already lost to really yeah you may really want to rethink it because you're not going in with the right thing. I love your example farmer's market you do one then do three then do six mm -hmm. maybe then go to your go to stongs go to donald's go to famous foods like in the in, then hit those go to yeah. salt spring you know go yeah. to country grocer get a few yeah. things going right as opposed to yeah i know a lot of us tomorrow morning get kroger's in the states but i'm yeah. going for 20 billion dollars all right yeah. sure i'm glad you're going to get there but you haven't done it and it takes a lot of effort to scale it's, it's hard and it's like, I'm, yeah, I'm, and still I'm before baffled. you have demand, like that's yeah. that's again kind of ballsy, right? You want to kind of prove a little bit to make sure you've got something viable. I, I think it's executing the basics daily consistently. I, hmm. but that's but like, and I guess that's like in anything in life, really, right? If you miss all the fundamentals, if you don't build a strong foundation, the house isn't going to mm. stand. Right. You know, I also the old European, yeah. uh, you know, analogies, right. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they look at it. Well, you, you built it on quicksand and you used shitty lime in the cement. What'd you think it was going to do? Right. If you didn't do the foundation, the beginning part, yeah. how's, how's the end going to look? I, I think, I think part of the, cause I think the analogies are sound. I, I think the problem is, is we, we live in an environment where tech startup has kind of overtaken a lot of this and so kind of this idea that you can kind of hack it together the fake um, it till you make it yeah i mean you know and tech startups are kind of famous for this right like you you know because the as long as you get good ui ux people who can build you nice interfaces you you don't necessarily know that you've got a problem until much much later right and and then by then you know, you raised two or three rounds because you were able to show some growth and then, you know, but 
like products aren't built that way. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the problem. Like, I think that's the thing that founders miss along the way, right? They're not built like that. You've, you've really, when you go to a country fair, you have to have the right product because those, those country fair people, they're actually really tough to deal with. Right. So you got shit on a stick. Like they'll tell you it's shitty and then they'll tell you it's shitty again next week when they come back and don't buy your product. They'll still tell you it's shitty. And they'll right? tell all their friends. It's, yeah. It's a really it's shitty. Like you screw it up. Like it's a rough, you can't go back to the same country fair. They're just not going to have you. Right. Like, you know. yeah. And it, you know, you usually have one chance. If you're lucky, you might have two. Maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I, I think, and you touched on it, um, Kenny, but if you don't come in with the right intention and if it's not aligned with mm. who you are and deep at your core, it, it's going to somehow show if it's not, you know, if I you're not intrinsically, bound, if you're externally kind of attached to something or romanticizing what happened. And I also think that not every founder goes with that mindset, mm. you no, know, I agree. I agree. And, agree. And, and some, some don't, you know, some need support, some need help. And I always say, ask for help. Like if you don't know, go to the experts and ask and, you know, uh, keep calling, right? And ask for support. And but most times people will help. Yeah. They may not help forever for free, but especially in this industry yeah. that we're all in, people in this industry are pretty damn good. Most will help, right? Totally. Or direct you, go talk to this person. Tell them yeah. I know, tell them I sent you, go talk to them. They'll see what they can do. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. And uh, I think once you grow and you, you get to that certain viability. You have to take care of your people. They're your biggest assets. Absolutely. You take care of them. They'll look after your business. 100%. Right? 100%. Nothing like having soldiers. Yeah. Right? And I like it when people are all ingrained into I, I just I posted a, a week ago or two that I started working for um, Medea Medical Products or Healthcare kind of mm, company um, a, a good friend of mine Brandon Laidlaw started and and kind of out of necessity and turned around COVID stepped up he had great contacts great capital partners and and stepped up to provide you know um, PPE and protective equipment sanitizers masks and then now um, diagnostics tests COVID tests different assays and, and and growing from there but he just wanted to do the right thing and, and, and support in a time of need and he brought in the right people um, and takes care of them not and, and supports them to grow. Yeah. Not rocket science. And, and, you know, it's they, amazing. yeah. It, when it's like, there's, there's enough to go around for everybody to win, but it's like, you got to have that drive to win. Right. And grow. Yeah. And you got to execute. Yeah. Probably the yeah. most important part. At the end mm -hmm. of the day is really just do it and get her done. And, for leaders like that, you're like, you know, uh, uh, and then for the right cause or making healthcare more accessible or equitable, you're like, I'll do whatever I can. Right. Mm. Very nice, young man. Amazing. A treat. Very Thanks, nice Jaren. You on. It, it, it's been a pleasure. And um, if there are any any people that need some support that are listening, or help, yeah. Um, well, LinkedIn is the best. Yeah. Um, so J E R I N last name M E C E Jaren Meche. You can find me on LinkedIn. You have to pass and, that uh, test though. If he says, yeah. How do you say my last name? and you say it wrong, <laughs> that's it. Denied. Yeah, yeah no. it's an instant drop uh, right there. Yeah, and 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 you said, Kenny and, and Phil, you're the same. It's like, you know, we're here to help, we're here for a short time, mm -hmm. exactly. All right, and it's a challenging industry to begin with, right? So if there's anything we can do, we will. And if we can, mm -hmm. we'll point you in the right direction. Put you in the right direction and mm -hmm. light her up. And if baby. not, if not, best of luck. <laughs> like, you know, after you there's only so much you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get after yeah. it. Go, you know, get, you know. Do what you got to do, we'll, baby. We'll support in the market when we see the products there, right? Like that's, we'll that's purchase amazing. it. Yeah. Amazing. Anyway, well, uh, buddy, thanks for rescheduling. Grateful yeah. for you guys. Thanks, thanks for yeah. coming on. Thanks for and taking time away from the fam. Yeah, and, and I appreciate like what you guys you. do. You, you've connected with so many phenomenal founders and products and brands. And I'm not sure if you do get a lot of feedback or mail, but uh, you know, emails are written. But you, I know you've had a lot of.
impact, right? And there's so many learning lessons. That. Even listen to a few of your you. podcasts. I was Thank like, you. this is phenomenal. Well, Thanks. if you get people, keep pushing them to us. Like seriously, yeah. we'll, take, we'll take them because yeah. I mean, if we can get the word out and help other people behind them who've got ideas and just don't know what to do, then we're doing yeah. our part. I, I agree. It's th this commerce life, baby. Oh, I love you, man. Yeah. All Thanks, Jared. Right. Take care of yourself, buddy. Awesome. Stick Take around. Care. Jared. Take care. All Enjoy right. pinch. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bud. He's cool. Nice young I like man. him. I like him yeah. a lot. Nice young man. No, yeah. he's got his shit together. He's got his head on screwed on right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But and right. I think it's important yeah. that people listen to people like that because he's done it. And you know, he's humble enough to know what he's what he can do and what he can't do. And I think that's a fundamental problem with a lot of founders, to be very frank. That's why I was kind of trying to dig on that is I do think it's, you know, know what you're good at. I think that's a big, and I think it's a, I think it's a, I just think that he kind of lends, you know, like he's, he's an investor, right? He's, he's someone that all of these brands that want to sell or raise funds from his viewpoint is, is not dissimilar right he's just giving you true feedback like you go to most venture funds they wouldn't tell you all this stuff they just kind of say look you're not ready for us or something along those lines oh, i won't say but, anything and drag you through yeah, two months of hell yeah yeah and still yeah. do nothing right yeah but but in this case he's actually been forthright about about you know yeah what's important so that's yeah. a good thing no i like his good style thing. i mean that yeah. but that's just that's an intrinsic uh part of yeah. his being obviously yeah. that's what he believes yeah. and and it shows and that's yeah. why you like people like that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. So my friend, cool. I got to go for a business dinner. So uh, Okay. Business dinner it is. I'm bailing on you. Bail away. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Hope Thank you, you for enjoyed listening. that episode. Yeah. And if you need any help in the space, uh, Jiren will probably be the guy to help you out. Jiren, us, just, yeah, just holler. Hunter, call just out. Holler. Yeah. Never know what information you may get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't do much damage. <laughs> awesome. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye, buddy. Job, bud. Take care.